While shooters and reloaders out there, it's Fortune Cookie 45 LC getting ready to tee off in our tournament here. And what we have here is a very interesting golf ball. Nice putt. Well, sure, we were having fun with that. This is not a golf tee, of course. This is a 99.9% .9 silver rook. And this is not a golf ball, but rather it is a zinc cannonball, about the size of a golf ball. This video is a VR to Elvis Ammo, who is courageously doing some bullet casting with zinc. He's got a new video out on casting 223 and 30 cal bullets with zinc. And so you all go run over there to Elvis Ammo and check it out because it's very interesting. Well, we like to be a little different in the hot lead zone. So let's go ahead and go back to the very beginning when gunpowder first came on. And the tendency to use something simple like round river rocks uh, was tried for a bullet and it was hard to get the right size, uh, oftentimes too small for the uh, smooth bore that was being used. So it didn't work that well. And when it did work, when you found the right size, uh, it, there wasn't enough weight to really carry very far or carry accuracy or this kind of thing. The lighter the uh, rock was, the more it would, would just veer off course. So rocks weren't very good. Well, next iron was tried because iron is very plentiful in the Earth's crust. So it's easy to find, cheap, and the technology for working with iron was set because it was done with blast furnaces or blast type of bellows type of thing where you could get the temperature up to 3000 degrees because iron melts at 2800 degrees. One of the problems with iron is the high melting point. So it's harder to melt, but it's easy to work. Once it's melted, you could pound it, roll it, you could shape it and get the uh, size and, and shape of a bullet. And the round ball was very simple. So the early cannonballs were made of iron. And the hardness of the iron being over 200 on the Brunel hardness scale that didn't matter because it was shot through a smoothbore and the iron cannonballs were smaller than the bore anyway. So it just rolled down the, the barrel and the black powder drove it out. Now the density of iron is 7.8 grams per cubic centimeter, which is not as dense as lead or some of the other metals we're going to talk about, but it's dense enough to use for a projectile. And it was heavy enough that it would fly fairly straight to the target within the confines of the accuracy of the times. Now, even though iron could be made into bullets for us to shoot today, and in fact, we have steel jacketed ammo, we have steel shotgun slugs, this kind of thing. For reloaders, iron is not very workable. We can't cast it ourselves, practically speaking. So someday we may have to use a lathe to turn our bullets, but iron being the Brunel hardness that it is, would be a little bit tougher on our rifling and uh, would probably wear out our bores uh, fairly quickly. Even soft iron would be a little bit of a problem, although it could be done. Now gold. Gold would be a very good material for bullets because it's very dense. It's twice as dense as lead and over twice as dense as iron. It's at 19 grams per cubic centimeter. Now the Brunel hardness of gold is 188 on the megapascal scale. So that is less hard than iron, of course, but it's soft enough to use for a bullet metal. Now, one of the problems of gold is a melting point is 1947 degrees. But if you alloy the gold with other metals like silver, you can actually bring the melting point down into the 900 degree, the top end 900 degree range. So we could actually cast with gold, but the problem with gold is this high cost, not practical for bullet material. Although if we 
had to make bullet saw gold, we could. And it's soft enough not to be overly wearing on our, our gun barrels. Now silver. Now, I don't know if any of you remember out there, but the Lone Ranger used to make his bullets out of silver. And wherever he went, he would leave a silver bullet behind his, as his business card. Well, look at that masked man. He left behind this silver bullet. Well, let's look at silver as a possible bullet or projectile material. The density is just like lead. Density is 10 and a half grams per cubic millimeter, whereas lead is at 11. Now, the Brunel hardness of silver is 200 on the megapascal scale, and lead is 38 plus on that scale. So, silver is six times harder than lead. And that is a disadvantage. So we might get some more barrel wear, but it could still be used. It will shoot down a gun barrel and obturate and this kind of thing with a little bit more wear to our rifling. Now the melting point of silver is a problem though. It's 1763 degrees. So you're looking at high temperature to do the casting. But we could de definitely cast silver. The casting could be done with a direct propane torch onto our ladle and once it was melted keep that heat up there and pour it into the mold and the mold's got to be hot too or the metal will never get but in there. once made our bullets would be shooting very similar to our lead except for the hardness so they'd be hard to size now a metal that you've heard about because they're using it for some bullets and they're using it in some shot shell shot applications and that is bismuth. Now bismuth is a very interesting metal. It melts at 520 degrees, which is actually a lower melting point than lead, which makes it very easy for us to melt. We can melt it over our propane burners. We could melt it with our bottom draw pots, this kind of thing. Bismuth is used in the overhead fire extinguishers that are on the ceilings. And what happens is when a fire occurs, the flame temperature melts the bismuth that's stopping the water flow and when the bismuth melts the water just gushes out and puts the fire out. So bismuth is very handy in that regard. Now the thing about bismuth is that it's BHN 70 on the megapascal scale which means that it is twice as hard as lead and that's not too bad. So it can be used to shoot easily in shotgun pellets or shotgun shot and it could be used in bullets like 22 caliber bullets could be made out of bismuth and the hardness could be compensated for by careful fitting now the density of bismuth is a, almost identical to lead it is 10 on the grams per cubic millimeter and lead is at 11 so that's very similar in density so this behaves just like lead with a little bit more hardness we could definitely cast our bullets with bismuth, but the cost is a factor. You're looking at three or four times the cost. Um, I've got to calculate that out. It may even be a little bit now, more. This, of course, is our Lee 420 casting pot, and it is capable of melting anything that will melt at 900 degrees or less. So it's ideal for some metals. Lead is the predominantly designed feature for this casting pot but it will melt things such as bismuth and also the zinc very easy to melt with this unit. Now if you do melt zinc with this the pot will have to be a designated pot for zinc only and you might want to bore out the little drain hole so that the flow is stronger to allow easier mold filling. Okay now let's talk about zinc and this is what Elvis Ammo was using to cast his bullets, zinc. Now, the thing about zinc is that it's fairly plentiful in the Earth's crust. Unlike gold and silver, uh, it's easily found. Not as easily found as iron, but the cost of zinc is also not that high. So it's a practical material in that regard for making bullets. Now, as we know, the zinc melts at 787 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes it a danger 
to get into our lead alloys that melt at 620. If it gets into our lead alloys, zinc ruins lead alloys for casting. But all by itself, zinc is very important for shooters because it is oftentimes alloyed with copper and nickel to make brass. And brass is that just central to our shooting. So it's kind of funny that you got a material there that is so important in our brass, but we don't want it in our lead. Anyway, zinc melts at 787 degrees. So it's easy for us to work. We can melt that right in our, our Lee 420 casting pot. The density of zinc is 7.14 on the grams per cubic millimeter. So it is less dense than lead, but not that much less. Lead is 11. So you're looking at 65% um, heart of the, uh, of the weight per volume. But that makes it still practical to use as a bullet material. In fact, zinc, the density of zinc is almost exactly equal to iron. So that's why this cannonball works. This is a zinc cannonball designed to be dropped down a smooth cannonball barrel and fired with black powder. This is an actual zinc cannonball. Now the Brunel hardness of zinc though is the problem. If you shoot down a smooth bore that's a little smaller in other words, the, the ball is a little smaller than the bore. You got no problems with hardness. But if you try and shoot zinc down a, a gun barrel, the hardness of zinc is 327 or higher on the megapascal BHN scale, which makes it 10 times harder than lead. And sure, we could shoot that down our gun barrels, our, our rifling. Uh, and if they were perfectly sized to our groove diameter, we could get obturation, but we're going to get a lot of barrel wear. So even though you could shoot it down our gun barrel okay, it's too hard. So we really thank Elvis Ammo for doing a lot of pioneer work on the use of zinc for casting bullets, and his conclusions are very valuable, and that is they're difficult, it's difficult to cast bullets out of zinc. We're going to use a lot of time and effort to get the output and also we need to be very careful about the hardness of zinc so that as Elvis was saying the small driving bands and multiple grooves would be the way to go because that's the way to get around the hardness of zinc to shoot down our gun barrels and not wear out our gun barrels too quickly so bearing surface is very important we want less bearing surface with zinc bullets if we're going to go that way. Now zinc for our shotgun slugs would be a slam dunk. We would use it in a smaller diameter than our bore and then put it into a shot cup to make up the difference and the hardness then would not be a problem. But we don't want to shoot through a full choke for sure or our full choke will be damaged by shooting these kind of things through it. So when you get right down to it, we come right back to our lead. And lead is such an ideal material for our bullets because of the density being what it is. It's going to be the ideal accuracy and uh, maintaining trajectory and all of that kind of thing thanks to the density of lead being what it is. 11.34 grams per cubic millimeter. And the melting point is ideal for casting. 621 degrees. It doesn't melt on a dime, but it melts easily with our flames and our propane and our electric bottom draws, all this kind of thing, ideal with lead. And the Brunel hardness, which is eight and up on the scale that we normally use, the Brunel hardness number scale, but on the megapascal Brunel scale, it's 38 and higher. So 38 applies to eight on our scale. But the lead is perfect for obturation, especially when we alloy it with um, uh, metals like tin and antimony, of course, to get the hardness, plus water quenching and heat treating, all those things respond well with lead. And so that's why all these years we've gone back to lead and the lead is important in our bullets. We might try and find substitutes but substitutes will not be as good as So in spite of all the substitutes that are available for our bullets, we come back to the lead as being ideal. Shooters and reloaders out there, 
best to you and have a nice day. Bye for now.